All right, 12.4, represent measurement data on a line plot. Now, I think you're going to like this one because it's pretty visual. It's reading a type of graph. Um, so just know that I think it should be a good one. Um, the objectives are I can create line plots of data sets involving measurement data. Um, and really a focus on I can interpret line plots. So understand what they mean. Now the problem we're going to look at first, Ryan filled several cups with the same amount of water and set them out in a room. So just picture this dude like setting out cups of water in a room. The next day he measured the amount of water remaining in each cup. The table shows his findings. So we have this table here that shows all the different cups that he'd set out. All what, 18 of them? Um, so that's one way to represent data. Right? Data is just information, um, often numbers that we are gathering. So, how many cups had two tablespoons or more of water remaining? We could use the table to figure it out. We could also use a line plot. So, in your notes, go ahead and write, we can represent data in a line plot. Not to be confused with a line graph that actually has a line. This is where you're plotting points on this line. So it's called a line plot. It has an X or a dot for each data point. So in this case, each cup is represented by an X. So like this cup had one tablespoon of water. This cup, this cup, and this cup all had one and one fourth which match the numbers in the table. So you just took the numbers in the table, made X's where they belong. So the question to think about again is how many X's are above two? Remember, because we're trying to figure out how many cups had two tablespoons or more of water remaining. So how many X's are above two? Well, we have four right there. Right, there's four that had two tablespoons left. You can write mark that on your paper if you want to track with me. How many X's are above two and one fourth? So how many had two and one fourth tablespoons of water? One. And then how many X's are above two and a half? Again, it is one. So we can see four. One and one had two or more. So how many cups is that? Well, that is six cups. Six cups had two or more tablespoons remaining. So we can ask all sorts of questions about the data in line plots. In this case, how many had two or more? Well, there were six of those cups. So we can see how many measurements there are how the measurements are grouped together, it gives us a much nicer visual. Because if I look at the table without sitting and counting, it's hard to tell like which was the most. But if I look at it on a line plot, I can easily see, oh, that one's the most because it's the tallest. It had the most number of cups with that amount. Um, so visually, it can be really helpful to represent data in some sort of graph or chart versus just a table. We can still understand the data, it's just easier to see um, what's going on when it's presented differently. So, again, how does the line plot show which measurement occurred most often? Like I just said, that's the one with the most number of X's, right? Imagine this is like how many siblings they had. Well, which was the most common number of siblings? The one that's the tallest which was the most common measurement, the one that's the tallest. All right, we're gonna do some questions on here. How many mice are represented on this line plot? So this line plot is a bunch of mice. Let me double check, I'm remembering that correctly. In case there's more to it, right? We wanna know the story behind the line plot. Okay, the lengths of various mice from nose to the tip of the tail. So this group of mice, maybe science experiment, or they were doing some sort of 
Yeah, science experiment. All right, so how many mice are represented on the line plot? See if you can figure it out. All right, hopefully you got it. We can see there's a mouse, there's a mouse. Each of the X's are mice. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mice. All of these differing lengths. Now, how long is the shortest mouse? How long is the longest mouse? See if you can figure it out. All right, the shortest mouse, hopefully you saw, is four and one fourth inches. These are all inches. How long is the longest mouse? Six and one fourth inches, right? It's not like the lowest number of X's, or it's not like this one is somehow the longest. This means that there's the most mice. Sometimes it can be confusing to separate the biggest. Like what if somebody says the biggest, that could mean multiple things. In this case, they were asking for like the biggest size mouse. Which measurement or measurements occurred the most often and which measurement or measurements occurred the least often, assuming at least one mouse had that length. Hope you got it. The least often, or sorry, most often, there were three mice that were five and a half inches, three mice that were five and three fourth inches. Those were the most. The least, only one mouse was four and a fourth and four and a half. So those were the least often, assuming they had one mouse, right? Like you could say, well, four and three fourths, five and six, there were zero mice, but assuming there was at least one. And then how many mice are longer than five inches? And how many mice are shorter than five inches? Go ahead and figure it out. All right, hopefully you're seeing that these are not too tricky to interpret if you take a minute and you look at them. So how many mice are longer? Well, this is longer. All these data or measurements are longer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 mice we're longer than five inches. Shorter than five inches, we have two mice over there that are shorter than five inches. Again, looking at it, thinking about it, taking the time to really study it, and hopefully you're understanding how to read it. If you're not, make sure you are asking questions. What is the difference in inches between the longest and shortest mouse? Go ahead and figure it out. All right, hope you got it. The longest one is six and one fourth inches. There's two of them really that were tied for that. The shortest was four and one fourth. Difference means I'm going to subtract. So six and one fourth minus four and one fourth, oops, four and one fourth is two inches. So they were two inches different in length. That's all for this one. If you need help understanding, make sure you ask. Good luck.